So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology and welcome to my Samsung Galaxy A54 5G unboxing and first impressions. Now I'm excited to check this one out because last year when we covered the A53, I called it one of the more disappointing phones of the year and that was mostly due to its weaker performance. Hopefully they fix that here. Galaxy A54 5G. And on the back, you'll see it does contain a A54, a SIM ejection pin, USB-C to USB-C cable, a quick start guide, terms and conditions, no chargers in the box, it seems like. And this phone does start at a price point of $449, so well under $500. And with trade-in discounts and deals, that's going to be one of the cheaper Samsung phones you can pick up this year. So in the box over here, we will find ourselves... The Samsung looks like the warranty guides in there. Well, nothing right there. We do have a charging cable and yeah, there's your warranty guides and a SIM card tool right there. So still with the SIM card tool, that's really nice. You still have a SIM card, but USB-C to USB-C cable. Most of you probably do have a charger, so you're going to be all good on that front. So let's go ahead and take a look at the phone itself. And here we go. Now, this phone right here does come in two different colorways, but before we do that, let's go ahead, bring the mic down. You know the drill. Once in a lifetime only with this. Oh man, once in a lifetime only. And I gotta tell you, just on first impressions, Samsung, once again, has knocked it out of the park. This phone looks and feels like a phone that costs well more than what it does cost. This actually feels similar to something like the Galaxy S23. Symmetrical design, again, man, it's looking like we're gonna, as long as this can perform well, we should have a pretty solid value on our hands here. Now this comes in awesome graphite and awesome violet colorways. I went with the violet just because it looks better in thumbnails. In addition to that, I always get the black Samsung phone, so I wanted to see what this one looked like. So let's go ahead and boot this up here, and we'll talk a little bit more about it. So this does have a 6.4 inch display, so that's gonna be bigger than the Galaxy S23, but smaller than the S23 Plus. You'll find a SIM card tray up there. And then we have a microphone over there. We do have triple camera. On the right side, we do have ourselves the volume rocker power button. At the bottom, USB-C. And then we do have ourselves a volume rocker. So I do have some plastic here on the sides as well. I'll peel that off later. But let me go ahead and get this thing set up. It's gonna have in-display fingerprint sensor, no official face unlock. And one thing I could tell you right away too, just looking is this phone does have thicker bezels. There's definitely a little bit of a chin down here. So this is one of the sacrifices you make. It's not a big one, but it is one of the sacrifices you make when you spend a little less. You don't get edge to edge. You don't get that super premium look and feel like you'll find on the more premium models. But still, they're doing a pretty good job of making this look and feel like a phone that costs several hundred dollars more, which is pretty cool. It's just got to have the performance to match. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. I'll be back when this is booted in to the One UI 5.1. All right, guys, so here we are now booted into One UI 5.1 Android 13 on the Galaxy A54 5G. And you heard the Samsung chime right there. And what I really like about this is take a look at Samsung's A53. This is what I like about what Samsung has been doing lately. They don't give you phones that look exactly like last year's phone. So while this phone is not quite, you know, a major, major upgrade. It's gonna be even a little bit smaller on the screen. You know, it has a wider aspect ratio, it looks like to me. Um, it also has a different look and feel. Look at the back. I mean, look at that camera bulge versus this. They did get rid of that extra camera, which might annoy some people. We'll talk about that later. But I'm sure overall, they're gonna be pretty decent cameras for the price point. And just look, I mean, the overall phone it just looks and feels different, and that's what I like. It feels like you're getting something that's new, it feels different, and that's quite nice about this device right here. Now, do keep in mind that this phone is available on pretty much every major carrier. You can get this on AT&T, 
for you know four forty nine or ten dollars a month. You can get this for T Mobile. This also comes in for only ninety nine dollars if you purchase a monthly plan. I'm not sponsored by any of these. This is just some notes that Samsung sent me. Um, Verizon has this thing starting April six, which was yesterday. You can get this for as low as ten dollars a month, or you can pay four ninety nine retail. I don't know why they're charging more for a retail. Maybe because they want you to use the device payment plan. Also, US Cellular has this thing for, you know, if you want to, you actually can get this if you do a new one upgrade. You can get this thing for free on select plans. So, a pretty nice, you know, budget offering here from Samsung. Now, I do want to talk about, you know, the software because you're going to get the same type of software you'll find on the more premium phones. And this is critical because you don't got to go ahead and pay top dollar to get the top software. You're going to get one UI 5.1. I'm sure there's probably a software update already or coming soon right out the box. There you go. See what I'm talking about? Software update already on this phone. And you're going to have Android 13 on board as well. Now I do have these buttons are on by default. I will put on the navigation bar before my next video. So do be ready for that. We'll install that later. But let's take a look at the wallpapers. That's another thing I always like to look at in my initial videos on phones. They did carry over some of the older wallpapers from prior A series devices. They only brought that one looks like right there. The rest of these are, I think on the older A series devices, but that doesn't really matter. You have the graphical wallpapers here that come on all Samsung phones. You also have the ability to change different colors and stuff like that. And this phone right here also does, this is something some people may not like, but at the same time, you got to keep in mind that this phone is not the top of the line. This phone does have an Exynos 1380. It's a five nanometer processor, but here's the deal. The Exynos chip, while nowhere near as fast as the Qualcomm chip at this phone range, I don't think it's going to bother too many people as long as it can perform well enough for day to day. So that's what I'm really going to be looking into for this phone, one thing that really annoyed me about the Galaxy A53 was it's not great performance. A lot of people disagree with me, said it was good enough. For me, I did not like the performance on that phone. Now, going to the display, you'll see that you do have adaptive brightness. They don't bring things like uh, extra brightness modes here, but you do have the 120 hertz. And do they bring enhanced comfort? No, you just get the regular eye comfort shield. So. There are some features that are going to be missing. They might bring them in future updates, but you still have vivid, natural. You can tweak that. You, diff, you do have different font sizes and well, you have that on every phone, but you have plenty of advanced features here that are still found in most Samsung phones, including some labs features like full screen and split screen view, pop view. So there's a lot going on here that's going to be very similar to the more premium device. I can tell you right out of the box, it's feeling quite smooth which is very nice. Now let's take a look at the actual camera. It's really hard to tell from indoors, but I can tell already these cameras are not going to be as good as the top of the line Samsung's. They don't, these photos don't look that as amazing already, but I will tell you that they're not going to be horrible. You're going to have a pretty solid camera offering here uh, for this phone. This actually does have a 50 megapixel main camera. So Samsung is actually giving you ability even on their entry offering here to get 50 megapixels on this a series. So if you go over here to more, take a look at this. They're also hooking you up with a pro pro video. I'm not sure they do expert raw on here, but even though that a 53 had a macro mode, this still has a macro mode as well. So even though they took out that camera, you'll still be able to do that macro mode. So it's not really a big deal. Um, if we go over here to more, you'll find things like hyperlapse, no director's view on here, but still pro video. So, <laughs> wow, you can do pro video on a phone this size. And then they have a fun mode right here where you can change a look and reimagine your world with special unique Snapchat lenses. We'll have to take a look at how this does in social media applications as well. Also on the front facing camera, you are looking at a 32 megapixel camera capable of 4K 60. I can tell you already that um, this camera looking pretty solid with the skin tones, even though it's an A-series. I think people are going to quite like this. I can tell immediately when I look at selfie cameras if they have that like cool look or they just look weird and soft. This one doesn't look like that. It's not the best, but it doesn't look horrible. I think people are going to actually like this front-facing camera on here. 
Now in terms of video, the front facing camera is very close to the face. I'm not a fan of that so far, but you do have the ability to go at least 4K at 30 on the front. Samsung could, if they wanted to be nice, they could back this camera out a little bit and maybe give you a little bit of a wider angle, but in the full HD 60, it's pretty wide, which is probably my favorite for vlogging right there. And yeah, so overall, a lot going on for the camera section of this phone as well. Very nice. Now, this also is housing a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. That is insane for this phone. I mean, for the price, you're paying for this to get a 5,000. I mean, they're really being generous there, giving you that size of a battery for that price. Apple's charging $800 for a iPhone 14 that gives you a, in the 3000 range battery. So this is insane. Also, you do get the ability to have 128 gigs on here, but you could go up even more in the storage department if you wanted to as well. So that's something to keep in mind. But does this have a SD card slot? Let's find out. It says it right there. Yep. So they're keeping the SD card slot, micro SD right there. Expand that storage, baby. Right there, SIM card. So, yep, this is the Samsung I know and love. See, come on, Samsung, man. You guys can put it on the A series. Put it back on my S23 Ultra, please. I know I got some beautifully fast internal built in storage. I want my SD card slot back on the big boy. But yeah, you can get this with 256 gig storage if you want. This 128 gig is okay for me because I can expand that memory. Now this also does have Bluetooth 5.3. It does have Wi-Fi 6, not 6E, but a USB-C 2.0 OTG, so not the quickest out there. But hey, man, for what you're paying, what do you guys think of this thing so far? I gotta say, man, I think Samsung has nailed it again. They have another really good budget offering this year. One thing about this is that, yeah, it's not like overly exciting. It doesn't look like an amazing out of this world new product but it looks like a substantially good enough upgrade for to be another good mainstream. And they still retain that beautifully symmetrical camera design, just a clean polished look on their even their A-series. So A-series to me has come a long way in the design. Again, I can't tell you much about performance, which has let me down in the past, but I'll let you know how that goes soon. Let's take a look at this compared to some other phones before we wrap up this video. So I brought in the S23 because it's kind of like the phone that I'm benchmarking this towards. It's smaller, it, the S23 has much thinner bezels and of course more premium materials, the non-smudgy back and uh, just more sleek polished aluminum rails. But this one right here, if you take a look, smaller camera, bumps obviously, not as premium, but bigger and looks about like the same phone. The average person will look at these two and say, oh, you guys got the same phone, that guy's is bigger with the Violet phone. So. Honestly, I don't think anybody would notice. Here's a competitor to this as well, the Pixel 6a. The true competitor is coming soon in the Pixel 7a, but I still want to show it because this is what out, what is out now. I think the 7a is going to be more competitive with this, but the 6a is still an amazing offering. Really good cameras on the Pixel 6a, so that would be tough to see if this A series can pull it off. Um, I'm not sure it will. If Samsung's still doing over sharpening on the cameras. We'll have to see, but overall, that's a good competitor to this phone. And then let's take a look at probably the worst competitor to this phone. Yes, the SE has really fast chip, but come on. This is just old looking at this point. You're, you're getting demolished here by Samsung when it comes to the base SE. Apple really needs to upgrade their entry level SE in terms of design. In terms of performance, it's amazing what they're offering and the software is amazing, the updates, all that stuff. But I know the classic feel, a lot of people love it, and I still love it too, but at the same time, it cannot go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the competitors on the market right now when it comes to what you're getting. I mean, the average person will look at this and be like, I'll take that phone with a bigger screen, triple camera. I mean, if, as long as they don't have to be stuck in the Apple world, I mean, I don't know who would choose this over this when it comes to pure hardware. That's just my opinion. So anyway, that's it for me on the Galaxy A53 full unboxing, first impressions. This one, I think we have another winner on our hands. It is warming up a little bit more than I would feel on the S23. That's probably the Exynos plastic body. I'll keep an eye on that. But overall, the phone is looking like it's going to be a winner. Let me know your thoughts on this down below in the comment section of this video. What you want to see with the Galaxy A54 going forward. And if you picked one up or plan on picking one up, I'd appreciate 
your comments down below on that. Anyway, thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Catch you in the next video. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace. Thank you.